Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about three different types of skis for different types of skiers. The reason I want to talk about this is because I've been in your position, maybe looking on the internet at your favorite pro riders and wanting to have the same skis as them because you want to ski like they do. Chances are that you're not quite that good yet and you would maybe benefit more from a different ski. So I'm going to give you a little overview of three types of skis. There are many more models that are similar to these ones, but I hope it's going to give you a feeling for what type of ski that could be good for you. So here we have three skis. None of these companies have paid me for this, but I've got these two for free and these ones are Danny's. Line Blend, mega soft, very playful. And here we got a focal wall, mega stiff, mega fast, mega steady for slope style or bigger. And here's something in between. A uh, very wise friend that buys a lot of different skis. He likes to see it like this. Buying skis is like going to a buffet where you can only choose like three characteristics of a ski. The rest you're not gonna get. No matter what the marketing says on many ski brands' websites, you can't really have it all in one ski. You maybe need two skis or three. But um, that's why I'm making this video to simplify this process so you're getting the right ski or type of ski for you. It doesn't need to be any of these three, there are other similar ones. So this buffet principles, the three things you get if you would buy a ski like it or exactly the line blend is you get extremely high butterability at low speeds because it is so soft. Check it out. Like honestly, this part of the ski is incredibly soft, silly soft. So you get extreme butterability, but it's difficult to do like a sweet, maybe butter cork, or maybe you, you can do it, but they have so little pop, but like a stiffer ski for that. What you also get is decent to surprisingly good low to medium speed carving. Because of the side cut and the way it's shaped, it turns surprisingly well. I would think it would be absolutely shit being so soft, but it has surprised me. The last thing you get as well, it's a decent low to medium speed like powder ski. It does quite all right to about boot deep powder snow. I quite often front flip when I've been trying it in about knee deep powder. It's not the best for that. Hello. What you don't get with this playful ski is stability on landings, for example. If you over rotate the back flip or something you like a flat spin five, you know, the stability on the foot ends about here. So when you land, you almost have to start landing like those inline skaters do. Like that. To get a bit more balance. Because if you land nose heavy here, it's kind of butter. Or even nose manual switch or uh, tail manual. It's not great. Another thing you do not get is high speed stability on groomers or crud. They're just a bit flimsy for that. So the conclusion of this ski is this ski can be great for a beginner, I would say. As you can easily learn your first butters, nose manuals. If you have the ambition to ski a little bit new wave style, lots of shuffles, lots of butters, for sure, it's super fun. There's a but though. If you're good enough to maybe do 540s and you're ready to start trying your first flat spins, under flips, corks, trying to land tricks, not clean on these skis is not so easy. It just, you're gonna crash more often than you have to. And buttering on these ones often leads to landing on your face. So you have to be either a really good skier that always lands clean or a beginner, then this one is pretty good. So it's a confusing ski in that way. From this three course buffet with a focal wall, as this one is called, but Revolt 87, same ski, what you get is speed because it's it has a race base it makes a difference it is really fast so that's one thing you get that i quite love about this ski i'm always faster than my friends next thing you get you get extreme stability because it, it's full camber meaning it's shaped like this has no rocker just have a little tip there um, and it's really stiff. So if you over cork a double cork 12 and super nose heavy, the ski is gonna be like a, a piece of wood just being bam, I'm standing on the ground now. 
So it's really forgiving for over rotating or yeah, for over rotating flips and corks or like over flipping them to really land on the tails and noses. Fantastic for that. The edge hold on these ones, you know, Felkel is mostly a like race brand, you know, the torsional stiffness is amazing. You, you can carve really hard, but at a very high speed. Because this one in 185 has, what did I say, 22, 23 meter radius. And which is great when you hit big jumps um, at high speeds, because you do have a lot of control there. So that's what you get here. Really fast, really stable, and really good edge hold, thanks to torsional stiffness and the camber. What you don't get from something like this ski or similar brands models of the same type is you get no playfulness. These skis, they mean business, not just any kind of business. We're talking dub 12s at least. That is, yeah, they are, they're not here to play. So I'm sorry, if you want something playful, look more in this direction on the spectrum. Um, also what you don't get is powder. Probably because powder is a playful activity. They don't like playing in it because they're so narrow, they're so stiff, so much camber, they just sink like submarines. It's a bad time. However, spring free riding, I can have a good time on it when it's just this much like slush. It's fine, it just plows through shit. The last thing I'd say you don't get with a ski like this is low speed butters and manuals. Like, check this out. Like, ah, I, it takes so much power to flex this thing. Like, this is the one arm belly. I can't believe I've skied on like three pairs of these. I'm so tired of stiff skis. It's reducing my fun on the mountain. Because I don't mean as much business as the skis do. But if you're a competitive skier, you know, got them, get one. To wrap it up, the slope style or like competition type twin tip ski is, this ski is for you who really want to go big. We're talking 900s and upwards, and you hope to do some competitions. So you need the speed, clear the jumps, etc. There is a subgroup of people that could also like this one. It's people who don't want to have a carving ski, but they want a twin tip ski that carves rather well and lives probably in a steep ski resort because you got to ski pretty fast, have a good time carving on them. But they are pretty good at it. So that wraps up the slope style kind of ski. The poachers, they are on the more narrow side of the fatter side of the freestyle spectrum, if that makes sense. When you're looking at skis here in the middle, you get a little bit of everything. It's a bit like going to a tapas restaurant. You know, how awesome time, isn't it, to go to a tapas restaurant? So, medium butterability. It is sick for most people, myself included. Because, like, it's quite soft this way. It's quite easy to get onto the nose. So once you're up on the nose, it still has enough flex to basically pop from the nose and then back up again so you don't land so back seated. While a ski like this one would just flop away and this one wouldn't even go up on the nose. Um, another thing that's important for this medium butterability, you know, it's a little bit wider. It has a bit of rocker, giving you a bit more of a platform to stand on when doing these sick butters. So calling it medium is actually great for most people. The next thing you get with this type of ski is forgiveness. And it comes in a couple of forms or a few different reasons. Uh, reason number one, it has some rocker and tail rocker. So if you do a 450 for example, because you want to do a 540 but you couldn't make it around to land sideways, they're gonna be quite forgiving in that way that you can slide around the last 45 degrees and save you from a crash. The second way it's gonna be forgiving is that it does have some stability. I mean like the flex is medium hard enough that even if you land nose heavy, the stiffness of the ski gonna help you come up to standing up again. So that's really good for you you want to learn your first backflip, front flips, corks, flat spins, etc. Because you will need a bit of a platform to maintain balance and also be able to, you know, skid around. Because a, a like competition ski slope style has so much edge grip that if you land 45 degrees, it catches the snow so good and don't really let you slide out so easily. So 
you're more likely to lose a ski and crash. And this one is so soft, you slip out and go onto your face. Also, it's just too forgiving. <laughs> it has the forgiveness of the, the rocker, but it doesn't have the forgiveness of actually giving you some support when you land nose or tail heavy. The third thing you get, you get medium carving performance. And that's also a great thing if it is into jumps or off jumps or on the slope. Um, there's quite a big variation in how tight the turning radius is on this type of skis. And that comes down a lot to your preference. Like as a guideline or rule, a little bigger radius may be better suited for really big jumps. And a shorter one for smaller jumps. Because so you don't have to do like an S turn up the lift of the jump to time it if you have a really tight one. It makes it easier with the timing when the radius is a little bigger. But currently for myself, I quite like a short radius. I find it they're playful because the rotations feel different if you carve hard off, off the lip. To generalize, what you don't get here is you usually don't get amazing on ice carving performance like you can get one of these slope style skis. So that's a, not so much of a bummer. I'm not that much into icy parks anymore anyway. Um, next thing you don't get, you know, you don't get this seriously steady platform to land on as a slope style ski. It's quite obvious, huh? And the last thing you don't get, you don't really get this super soft, super playful thing. You get something in between. And in the, this in between land that we've been talking about, it's probably where you can find a ski for you to develop your skills and have a ski that supports you throughout this process. Whichever path you want to go in skiing, you know, a ski here in the middle is probably where you can find a ski that really can progress with you for quite a while. Whether you want to learn, you know, maybe your first doubles or butters, you know, they can do it all. It's that simple. So to wrap it all up, who should have which ski? You probably got an idea of it already, but something like this, super soft. It's for the new wave kind of skier, or the absolute beginner that wants badly to do a little cool butters and such. But you have to be quite talented to take it, you know, bigger tricks on them, because you have such a small landing platform. Ski in the middle is probably, and this type of ski is for most of you skiers out there. You need something that is a bit forgiving, but yet soft enough to do some butters, but yet stiff enough to support you on the landings. And this is actually the most niche skier, and it's what you see on most pro athletes in the Olympics, X Games, etc. Uh, just because of its super high speed, good on ice performance, and the really steady landings you can do on them. So for the competition skier, for a lot of you guys that want to play around on the mountain, and for you who want to play around on the mountain at a pretty slow speed and lots of manuals, nose manuals, swerving and a lot of out of trick names I don't know because they're too new school for me for a 29 year old, you know. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video about these three skis. Um, I hope it helps you to think about what ski you want to have, not what pro rider you want to ski like. Check out here, here's a playlist with a few other product videos. Uh, if you want me to do more, please let me know in the comments what skis, what brands you want me to check out. And I'll reach out to the brands and see if they want to either lend me or send me a pair to try and check out for next season. All the best, good luck shredding out there, see you next time.